Uh, my name is Gary Fowler. It's good to see all your smiling faces this morning. So what I want to talk about is something that affects all of us today. Something that can be changed. We need to unleash the human potential. Everybody hears of startups. You hear of Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs and Wozniak. And you look at those startups and you say to yourself, how did they do it? It's curious. How were they so successful? Mark Zuckerberg was at Harvard University. Bill Gates was at Harvard University and they dropped out. Steve Jobs was at Reed College and he dropped out. Why? What are the secrets? And today what I'd like to talk to you about are some of those secrets. I'll tell you a little bit about what we've been able to do. In the last year I've created uh, with our team, we've done 67 startups in Russia. 67 in one year. We're now graduating another 30, so we'll have 97 by the middle of January. It is unprecedented. Why? Because 34% of those startups, 34% of those startups are successful. Another, th and have raised money. Another 30% of self-funded. Now this is here. It can happen anywhere on this planet. And I travel around the world and I talk to groups just like yours about this. Each one of you in this audience can create a startup. Each one of you have an idea. Each one of you can change the world. And today I want to talk to you about the soft side of it and I want to talk to you about some of the hard skills. So, it's kind of like being an Olympic athlete. When you do a startup, You've got raw talent, but you need to have the training. And I don't mean a lot of training. I don't mean going to Harvard University for two years or Stanford University to the MBA program for two years. I mean the real practical training to do it. I have students from 17 years old who have done startups to 57, 58 years old today that have done, successfully done startups. So, what is it? So, I work a lot with um, Guy Kawasaki, one of the great um, marketing minds of our time, literally work with him, and Steve Jobs. You've got to love what you do. You've got to, each one of you, as you come through this great school, you've got to have that passion. You've got to feel it in your heart and soul. You've got to create some magic. What we want to do is we want to create some magic. So one of the things we look at is having the passion. You've got to be able to conduct a symphony orchestra. You've got to feel it in your heart and soul. These are the soft side that people don't talk about. But this is it. When I go around Silicon Valley, by the way, I spend about three months a year in Silicon Valley, very close to Stanford University. So we do this. It's that passion inside of you. So I look at this audience here and I'm sure there's students in this audience that would like to create a startup. It's the passion, the belief that you can do it. The other thing, these are the soft sides. So passion is number one. Number two is optimism. You've got to look at that glass like that glass is half Fool. I did my first startup at 21. I was very, very lucky. I made $9 million by the time I was 23. And it was because of this. Because I didn't see the obstacles. I believed in the dreams. And my friends around me, my friends around me would say, oh, don't do it. It's not going to work. But I believed in the dream. So you've got to look at things. The glass have to be, has to be half full. The other thing is we've got to be able to paint mental pictures of where you want to go. I liken it to a GPS system, a navigator, where you set the direction of your life and you put it on the map and you say, this is where I want to go. 
this is what I want to do. Each one of those persons, from the co-founder of the internet, Vinton Cerf, the, co the CEO of NVIDIA, who founded NVIDIA, Guy Kawasaki, on and on and on and on. Each one of them, they have a no wavering belief and they know that they can do it. You've got to be out to stay positive. As I said, one of the things is being able to create those mental pictures. You've got to be able to create those yourself. You have to create those pictures. Those pictures, we have a blank screen here, but you've got to see it in front of you. You've got to see it. Some people come and they'll say to you, it can't be done, right? They won't share in the dream. You've got to have that belief in yourself. You've got to look in the mirror at yourself and say, I can do it. I know where I'm going to go. So these are the soft side of it. We've been working in uh, pr our program for a year and three months. As I said, in the first year, we've created 67 startups here in Russia. We're now going around the world and sharing our knowledge. The current status, it's amazing. It is truly amazing. 90% of innovative startups fail. 90%. Why? Why? Because they don't have the fundamental knowledge. It's not that you need to have a two-year degree to do it. It's having that practical application and the practical knowledge. Nobody teaches you how to do a startup, right? When you go to Harvard, Harvard University, the master's degree at Harvard University was set up to teach people how to be managers, not how to do a startup. You need to have those competencies. If we look at accelerators and incubators, which you see coming up all over the place, all over the world, but they're doing something wrong. What they're doing is they're creating a gigantic funnel. One example is they have 10,000 applicants, just like you in the audience, 10,000. They take those 10,000 down to 511 that they accept. Out of those 511, they say there are 37 of those that'll be successful and are successful, deemed by either being sold or having a certain monetary value. They're wrong. That is wrong. There cannot be 9,500 people that don't get it. It's higher. But we've got to nurture this thing like a seed. We've got to nurture this so that we understand. It's like planting in the springtime. And if you do it right, it works. So are they creating uh, value? Or are they just looking at financial performance? Most of the time, it's financial performance. They're not enhancing you as individuals. You're the ones. You're the key. If we change you, you succeed. If we create a community, you win. We want to create a community, an entrepreneurial ecosystem, 360 degrees all the way around, where you have funding, you got a chance to talk to your peers. That's part of it, talking to each other, exploring great ideas. People say there's magic in Silicon Valley, and there truly is. Why? Because most of, the, most of the founders of companies are either first generation or second generation immigrants. They come with a dream. They come with a belief that they can do it. So it's time for a change. We need to change. The movement has started. So if we look at VCs, venture capitalists, if we look at these incubators and accelerators, they're wrong. It's not a numbers game. It's a quality game. 
if we change the quality of what we give you, and I'm not talking about a long period of time, we do it in 10 weeks. If we change the way that we give you information and get you with the best people on the planet Earth, you can create startups. Each one of you. You have to have passion about what it is. You have to like it and enjoy it. You have to be happy. Because when it's all said and done, it's about being happy. You've got to have the fundamental skills given to you. You just have to have that knowledge, that roadmap. Once you have that roadmap, and when I was 21 years old, and I started my first company, there was nobody, nobody. I asked my father, I had a million dollars in loans. And I'm 21 years old. And I said to my father, Dad, what should I do? He said, Gary, I've never had a million dollars in loans. I don't know what to tell you. I understood then that it would be really good to have some peers to talk to. But I had to decide for myself. I made some right decisions, and I made some wrong ones. The other thing, one thing is absolutely critical for each one of you. Failure is not a bad thing. To fail, if you go down a fork in a road, and you take the wrong road, and you turn around and come back, is that failure? You made the wrong move. Understand, it's not a bad thing. It's okay. And when you hear other people say to you, geez, you shouldn't do it, don't do it, it's dangerous, you have to listen to yourself. You have to listen to your heart. You have to listen to your soul. You have to listen to yourself. Look yourself in the mirror. So this is what, so the, um, the competencies, the soft skills on the optimism, passion, visualization, lack of competency. They purely don't, most of the startups purely just do not, in the same age as many of you, do not have the competencies. They want to do it. They had a great idea. I was talking to some folks in here earlier. They have great ideas. But you've got to have some basic skill sets. It doesn't take long to get them. You have to understand your customer. Simple rule. If you've got a product, or you've got an idea, working on a web uh, system, working on a software tool, a game, what do you want to do? You want to see if there's somebody out there that wants to buy it. It's really simple. Don't get into a situation where you think to yourself, I can do it without any input. You have to go out and test it. Does somebody really want it? Do they want to buy it? Are they willing to pay money? Are they excited about it? Is it so good? It's just like Steve Jobs when he was, used to come out on the stage and he used to come out with a new iPhone. People wanted to grab it out of his hands because it was that exciting for them. That's what you want. Do people grab it out of your hands? Are they that excited about it? Not understanding how customers buy and the other thing is having conflicts with investors or partners. When you have these relationships with your fellow students and you want to create a company or friends, you've got to make sure that you're in it for the long-term commitment. They are going to be the person that you're living with, literally, for the next three to four to five years. Like Mark Zuckerberg taking his team from Harvard out to California, living in a house, creating Facebook. Jin Sun, the founder of NVIDIA, started the company, said the first month, NVIDIA is about a five and a half billion dollar company today. Started the company. He said, I didn't know what we were gonna do when we first got started. We we're living, there were three of us. Two of them would be sleeping, we'd be down there I'd be down there working. The first month I programmed the phone because I wasn't sure what to do. Nobody gave me those directions. And the founder of NVIDIA said, 
NVIDIA's in most of your laptops, it's the graphics card. He said, and I had an idea. I had an idea that graphics boards need to change, and I want to be the one to do it. And that's what he did. He became passionate about it. So, the keys for success. Passion, optimism, visualization, competency, and fostering a startup culture, and this is imperative. Hang around people that are like you. Talk about, share ideas, entrepreneurs clubs, events that happen in, in around the world. Share ideas. You may think that the idea you have is something that could be taken on a global basis. Find groups, go online, use social media, use every place that you can to get information because that's gonna help you be successful. It's today, actually, so I'm on my seventh startup. My seventh starts February 7th, actually. So you get addicted to it after a while. It is a passion. It changes your life. So with that, I'd like to say, believe in your dreams. Don't be afraid to think differently and move forward with your life. Take care of yourselves and thank you very much. I appreciate it.